What's up, friends? Hey, it's nothing but summer fun here in Gray's Kids, and we're talking about what it means to have confidence all summer long. Now, hopefully, since we're about three or four weeks into this, you figured out what confidence is. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. We can all use more confidence. You know, sometimes we can be pretty hard on ourselves, but when we learn to see ourselves the way that God sees us, hey, we've said this before, you know how much you're worth to God? You're worth Jesus. So you can be confident that you're pretty special to God. But listen, we've got a great lesson for you today from the Old Testament and a guy named Gideon. Yeah, it's going to be pretty epic. And we'll get into all this about confidence a little bit later. But for right now, what do you say we have a little fun with a game called Double Vision?
Well, that was a solid, fun game, and I'm glad you guys participated with me. But right now, it's time to get up on your feet because it's time for us to sing and dance and worship God together. I can't wait. Come on, get up. Here we go. Happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. The greatest day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me, sing it out. Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive singing out on that song. I love the song, Oh Happy Day, because it was a happy day for me when Jesus really washed my sins away. Well, look, let's do this. Let's pause for just a minute and uh, have a time of prayer. Thank God for his goodness. Why don't we thank him for that happy day when he did wash our sins away? And uh, then we've got one more song, and we're going to jump right into this lesson from Gideon, okay? Let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord Jesus, God, we thank you for the day. We thank you for loving us and saving us. And God, what truly a happy day it was, the day that we realized we needed to trust you as our personal Savior, invite you into our heart to be our Lord and Savior and to take away our sins so that we could have a forever relationship with you. And I'm so grateful for that day in my life and in the lives of many of the kids watching today. So Lord, today we're learning about Gideon and the importance of confidence in his life. And uh, so God, I pray that you'll give me the words that I need to clearly communicate to the kids the importance 
of this lesson today. So uh, be with the kids wherever they are. I pray that they'll pay attention and listen. Continue to be with our church and our pastor and all that you're doing there in Grace Kids and Grace Fellowship Church. We love you and we thank you and ask these things in your name. Amen. Hey kids, listen to these words of praise from Isaiah. It's found in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. It says, Lord, you will give perfect peace to those who commit themselves to be faithful to you. And that's because they trust in you. See, we can be confident and sure that God is at work in our lives. And we can trust him with our whole hearts, not just part of it. And not just on Sundays or Saturdays, whichever service you may normally come to, but every single moment of every day of our life, God will be faithful to us. So let's honor him with this song and let's sing it out. Here we go. You never turn away, you never leave my side And every time I call your name out just to find That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart trust you with my heart There are days when I feel I need a friend And then I hear your voice reminding me again That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start trust you with my heart You are more than able to lead me through the dark Your love is never failing I will trust you with my heart whoa, whoa, I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come No matter what I go through God, you are Never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come God, you are never gonna fail me. I will trust you with my heart. You are always faithful. You love me from the start. No matter what I'm facing, I will trust you with my heart. You are more than able to lead me through the dark. Your love is never failing. I will trust you with you with my heart. Hey kids, I can hardly contain the excitement that I have about today's Bible story. I mean, it is epic in every way. It's about someone who had a little bit of trouble feeling confident, even though God was right there by his side. Now, our story today comes from the book of Judges, and it's about a man named Gideon. Now, Gideon was a pretty normal guy. He was one of God's people, the Israelites. Unfortunately, it was during this time that the Israelites had turned away from God and God had allowed the Midianites to take over their land. Well, to survive, God's people began to hide in caves while the Midianites destroyed practically everything. We're talking their crops, their houses, their livestock. And after all these terrible things had happened, well, you can imagine the Israelites began to cry out to God. Well, God listened, and he sent the angel of the Lord down to a guy by the name of Gideon, who was threshing wheat inside a wine press. Now, listen, that's just fancy talk that means Gideon was separating out the part of the grain that you could eat. So God had heard the cry of the Israelites, and he sent an angel to a man named Gideon. And the angel told him in Judges chapter 6, verse 12, Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. Well, Gideon was a little confused, and he replied, you say the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? I mean, he's handed us over to Midian. 
Well, Gideon wasn't so sure about this, but the angel told him, you're strong. Go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I'm sending you. Well, still, Gideon wasn't feeling real confident. He needed more convincing. So in verse 15, Gideon said this, Pardon me, sir, but how can I possibly save Israel? My family group is the weakest in the tribe of Manasseh, and I'm the least important member of my family. Well, the angel reassured him. He says, I'll be with you so that you will strike down the Midianites. Well, even that didn't make him feel confident. And so he asked the angel for a special sign to make sure that this really was God talking and promising him these things. So God sent a fire that burned up meat and bread to prove that he really was with Gideon. Well, the Midianites and the Amalekites started to gather their armies to attack. And Gideon sounded a trumpet for the Israelite armies to follow him. And they came immediately heeding that trumpet call, but even then, Gideon still wasn't totally convinced. So he asked God for another sign. In chapter 6, verse 37, he said, I'll put a piece of wool on the threshing floor. And suppose the dew is only on the wool tomorrow morning, and suppose the ground all around it is dry. Well, then I'll know that you'll use me to save Israel. I'll know that your promise will come true. Well, God did exactly that. Only the wool was covered with dew, not the ground around it. But Gideon still wasn't 100%, so he asked God for the opposite to happen. He said, let me use the wool for one more test. But this time, make the wool dry and let the ground around it be covered with dew. So God did that too. Finally, Gideon was convinced that God was with him. Well, sometime later, Gideon camped together with about 32,000 men at the spring of Herod and prepared for battle. But here the Lord spoke to Gideon again. Gideon again. Yeah, I say that fast 10 times. Listen, this is in Judges chapter 7, verses 2 and 3. He says, I want to hand Midian over to you, but you have too many men for me to do that. Then Israel might brag, my own strength has saved me. So here's what I want you to announce to the army. Tell them those who tremble with fear can turn back. Well, Gideon did as the Lord said, and a whopping 22,000 men left. It's a lot of scared men. So that left about 10,000 men to fight this battle. But God told Gideon, hey, that's still too many. Gideon was kind of flabbergasted. And if you've ever had your flabbergast, you know how painful that can be. But Gideon was just shocked. I mean, less than 10,000 men? Had God seen the army they were about to face? Well, the Lord told Gideon, he says, look, take the men down to the water's edge and there he would whittle down the numbers a little bit more. So God told Gideon to pay attention to how the men drank from the water. Some men would drink the water the way dogs do, bringing the water up to their mouths and lapping it up with their tongues. In other words, they get the water. <laughs> yeah, others would get down on their knees and then leaned down to drink. So Gideon watched closely. Most of the men leaned down and stuck their heads into the water to drink. Only about 300 of them brought the water up to their mouths to drink. So God told Gideon, keep those 300 men and send the other 9,700 home. Gideon was shocked, but he did as the Lord commanded. He kept only the 300 men who brought the water up to their mouths and lapped it up like a dog. Then he went to sleep, hoping that the Lord would show up in a big way the next morning. Well, that night, God spoke to Gideon again. He told Gideon to quietly go down to the Midianite camp in the darkness and listen to what the people were saying. Then he wouldn't be afraid to attack. So Gideon began to creep down close to the camp, caught this little hushed piece of conversation between these two guys. One of the men had had a really odd dream. Listen, this is in chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. This guy says, I had a dream that this guy was saying, a, a round loaf of barley bread came rolling into the camp of Midian. It hit a tent with great force and the tent turned over and it fell flat. His friend replied, 
That can only be the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash. Gideon is from Israel. God has handed the Midianites over to him. He has given him the whole camp. Now, wait a minute. These people knew Gideon's name. And they also knew that God was with him. Gideon felt a sudden rush of confidence. And he just bowed there and began to worship God. And then he hurried back to the camp, woke up his men, and then he gave a trumpet, a torch, and a jar to each man and told them to surround the Midianite camp. Well, Gideon had the men smash their jars, light their torches, and blow their trumpets as loudly as they could. <laughs> And in the midst of all that, they shouted a battle cry, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Well, the Midianites, well, they were completely shocked and confused. They began to fight each other. They ran away crying out in fear. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I shouldn't blow the trumpet that much. But Gideon and the Israelites had won the battle. Wow. The people begged Gideon to be their ruler after such a great display of leadership, but Gideon refused. He said, look, you already have a ruler. It's God. If you think about it, Gideon was a total underdog. No one expected much from him. He didn't expect much of himself either. He was full of doubt and uncertainty, but still, he still chose to follow God and God used him to do something absolutely incredible. God used Gideon to save the Israelite people. So here's a simple truth for you today, kids. God can use you no matter what. Hey, say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. God can use you no matter what. And he absolutely can. You can be the smallest of the small. You could even be totally unsure of yourself. And you might think... I can't do very much, but God can use you to do anything and you can be confident when you trust in him. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Judges, chapters 6 through 8. As many times before, the Israelites turned away from God. He allowed the Midianites to take over their land. God's people hid out in caves. When they tried to grow plants or tend to livestock, the Midianites would show up and destroy their crops and animals. At last, the Israelites cried out to God for help. He heard them and sent the angel of the Lord to a man named Gideon, who was threshing grain in a wine press. Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. All Gideon could do for a moment was stop and stare. Uh, pardon me, sir. You, you said the Lord is with us? Then why has all this happened? The Lord has deserted us. You are strong. Go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I am sending you. Uh, pardon me, sir, but how can I possibly save Israel? My, my family is the weakest in the tribe, and I'm the least important member. I will be with you. Even with a direct message from the Lord, Gideon was still nervous about the whole thing. Uh, give me a special sign, then I'll know it's really you talking to me. So God gave Gideon a sign, sending fire to burn up meat and bread. God's spirit was with Gideon. And when the Midianites and the Amalekites gathered to attack, Gideon sounded a trumpet for the Israelites to follow. But even as the army gathered, Gideon once again pleaded to God for another sign. God responded by letting dew fall on a fleece, and then on the next day, only on the ground surrounding it. Okay. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. At last, Gideon was convinced God wanted to use him. He camped with 32,000 men at the spring of Herod and prepared for battle. Here, God spoke again. I want to hand Midian over to you, but you have too many men. Too many? Israel might brag, my own strength has saved me. Announce to the army, those who tremble with fear can turn back. Gideon did just as the Lord instructed. 
there, Lord. 22,000 men have gone home. <laughs> Only 10,000 left to fight. There are still too many men. Have you seen the Midianite army? Take the men down to the water. There, I will reduce the number of them for you. Even though it must have worried Gideon to lose more of his army, he did just as the Lord said. Field trip to the lake, everyone! At the water's edge, the Lord said, Some men will drink the way dogs do. They will lap up the water with their tongues. Separate them from those who get down on their knees to drink. Gideon watched carefully. Most men got on their knees and drank directly from the water, but 300 men cupped the water in their hands and lifted them to their mouths to lap. So, God, I send those 300 men home and keep the other 9,700, right? With the help of the 300 men who lapped up the water, I will save you. Let all the other men go home. Oh, um, okay, yes. Gideon sent home every single person in the army except those 300 men. Get some sleep. Tomorrow we will figure out what's next. That night, the Lord spoke to Gideon once more. Get up. What? Oh, uh, I'm awake. Gideon stumbled out of his tent. Below, the campfires and torches of the enemy armies covered the entire valley. So many. Like, like a swarm of locusts. Go down to the camp. Listen to what they are saying. After that, you will not be afraid to attack. Wondering if he might be dreaming, Gideon snuck down the mountain to hover in the shadows at the edge of the camp. He could hear voices from a nearby tent. I had a dream. A round loaf of barley bread came rolling into the camp. It hit the tent with great force and knocked it flat. Wow, but that can only be the sword of Gideon from Israel. God has given him the whole camp. Gideon listened in shock. Wow, God, thank you. At once, Gideon scrambled back up the hill to the Israelite camp. Get up, get up. The Lord has handed the Midianites over to you. Quickly, Gideon separated the 300 men into three groups and handed each one a trumpet and a clay jar with a torch inside. Watch me, do what I do. I'll go to the edge of the enemy camp. Then we'll blow our trumpets from all around the camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and his men headed quietly down the slope, fanning out in groups to surround the vast enemy camp. Okay, get ready. As soon as Gideon sounded his trumpet, he smashed his jar so the torch shone brightly. The other 300 men did the same. For the Lord! The Israelites held their ground, but their enemies panicked, confused by the trumpets and bright lights that pierced the dark night. They're coming from everywhere. The enemy armies were so confused, they began to fight each other, and then they fled in fear. After the men, Gideon and the Israelites chased their enemies all the way to the Jordan River and beyond until all the enemy armies were destroyed. The Israelites begged Gideon to rule over them. I will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Yep, Gideon was an underdog, filled with doubt, but he still chose to follow God, and God used him to save the Israelites. What an amazing story. You know, Gideon and the Israelites, they only needed jars, torches, and trumpets to win the battle because God was always in control. And kids, Gideon wasn't even sure if he was the right guy for the job. But God used him to do big things. And God can do big things through us as well, even though we sometimes don't feel ready. See, Gideon trusted God, and we can too. We can trust God no matter what. No matter what's going on around you, no matter how small or uncertain you might feel, you got to believe that God can use you no matter what. God used ordinary people to do some big things all throughout the Bible. Think about how Jesus chose regular people just to be his closest friends, the disciples. They changed the world by telling everyone about him. And God can work through any of us if we have the courage to trust him 
and follow his plan for our lives. Well, kids, listen, we got to wrap this thing up. But here's something I want you to remember. Put it down on your calendars. Make a note. Put it on the refrigerator. July the 19th through the 23rd, this is the pivotal moment, the most epic thing that's going to happen this summer in Grace Kids. We are having our press play, get in the mix, vacation Bible school, July 19th through the 23rd. It's going to start at 6.30 into 8.30 every night. Now, you can begin registering now if you go to our website, which is gracelives.com, or you can go to the Grace app and you can register there. Just talk to your parents. Go ahead and pre-register. Hey, even tell your parents if they want to volunteer and help serve in this, they can because we'll take them. We would love to have help on this, but kids, I'm telling you, we've got snacks, we've got crafts, we've got games, we've got mission stories, we've got Bible lessons. It's going to be crazy and it's going to be awesome and you're going to want to be there, so don't miss it. Vacation Bible School, July 19th through the 23rd. I want to see you there and I'm sure you're going to do your best. Well, kids, you know I love you, but I got to run right now, so you know the routine. Right hand up in the air, high five. I'll see you soon.